Okay, Arizda, uh, it's ready. We can start. Arizda, you you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can start. All right. Great. So, all right. Uh, is someone else will be joining, or uh, we are good to go? Yeah, students may be joining. They can come and uh, leave. But yeah. anyway, we are recording. <laughs> Uh, no no concern at all so we can proceed completed all right great 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 okay so let me introduce myself first i am arjita and i take care of college of the rockies in india and subcontinents so college of the rockies is a public college and we do have uh, seven campuses in total all the campuses are in british columbia so it is a college with canadian roots to have, uh, established in british columbia the main campus which is in cranbrook we are running most of the programs there, like 80% plus programs are running in Cranbrook campus. Yeah. Uh, College of the Rockies is popular for its uh, academics. It is uh, support to international students and, you know, post diploma job services and so many other things. I would uh, walk you through everything about province requirements and programs in between the session. First of all, I would like to share the screen and show you where we are exactly located on the map. So, I think you have uh, given me the rights to share, right? Correct. Yeah, you are co-host, so you can uh, share your presentation as well if you have any. Uh, otherwise, we can discuss the programs uh, like that. So I'll show you on the map. I'll I have a presentation that I would like to show you. Also, it is a trigger warning. I work with a lot of tabs open, so please, <laughs> please be calm and do not let your anxiety trigger with so many tabs open. I work like this. It's fine. Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes, so this yes, is College yes. of the Rockies. It is visible. Yes, it is visible. Great, great, great. Now here we are on the map. See. So this red dot you see, Cranbrook is the main uh, city for College of the Rockies. We do have two campuses here, out of which one is main campus. Now, what is so popular about Cranbrook and why we are so fond of Rocky Mountains? Because we took our name from Rocky Mountains only. So College uh, Rocky, because of Rocky Mountains, Cranbrook has a lot of tourism, a lot of many people from USA and around the world. They come uh, to Cranbrook to, experience adventure activities, winter sports, summer sports, and so many other activities, they, which are uh, the option for tourists in the city. Now, because of that tourism, we have a lot of urban development and infrastructural development in the city. So when we talk about connectivity, Cranbrook has its own international airport and the roads and the infrastructure is really good. So if you talk about uh, traveling to Vancouver and Calgary, we do have everyday flight from International Airport Cranbrook of one hour. One hour flight to Vancouver and Calgary every day and weekly flights to Surrey and other parts in the USA as well. Now, the tariff is also very, very reasonable. It varies from $120 to $150. So it is easier for students to afford this and visit their cousins, friends or relatives, you know, who all are living in Vancouver or Calgary or anywhere else. Now, apart from this, uh, if you want to drive, Calgary, three and a four hours drive, Vancouver, seven to eight hours drive. If you drive towards Spoken, around three hours drive is to Spoken City. You drive for five hours, you are into Washington, six and a half hours, Seattle City. So this is how easy it is to travel to a major location from Cranbrook. Also, being in British Columbia, you see British Columbia is completely coastal. It has very good weather. It is moderate than any other part of Canada. Cranbrook, whereas, is called as Sun City of British Columbia. So students who are going there get to experience very good moderate weather there, 9 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius from March to October. Coldest are December and January, but still it is below the knee snow. This much of snow students would like to experience now that they are going to Canada. So it's below the knee and one to two feet of snow, very manageable to work and uh, there to manage their academics at the same time. Then comes uh, <clears throat> whenever we are talking about a regional location. This is a regional area, Cranbrook. 
so there comes a very big advantage which is pr because pnp provincial nominee program is followed here and that's a really really big advantage i feel for students now any student who is concerned that being a regional area would i be able to find accommodation or jobs or you know the connectivity so i answered the connectivity already now what kind of accommodations are there i'm going to show you now this you have three options home stay on campus off campus definitely most opted option is off campus uh, rental housing for students if we talk about home stay i prefer i suggest this to those students who do not have any relatives or friends already in the city so they get a local contact these are college verified home stays and the three meals are included in this so it would cost you around 800 to 850 dollar for one month but you get a local contact a personal space to live into also three meals are sorted so one to two months you can go for these home stays and then maybe when you know the city better you have a social circle you know people there you can opt for a off campus residential housing also second option is on campus residence this is again into twin sharing it is a random allotment with your fellow student you would be sharing this you have to apply well within advance when you are going for either home stay or on campus housing so you will have to apply at least a month in advance then there are chances that we would be able to figure out how to get you a seat but off campus rental housing is always an option a lot of students are living there those international students are also helping other newcomers to find accommodation as per their requirements and as per their budget now now that i'm talking about accommodations already i would like to move on to cost of living also what is the cost of living i will give you an example 2 bhk rent there is 1000 to 1200 dollar all right if we take maximum which is 1200 dollar four students are at least sharing a 2 bhk 1200 is paid by four students so it doesn't come more than 300 to 350 dollar for per student a monthly rental you add 4 to 500 more they are good to go for complete month they have sorted their rent food grocery stationery everything transportation also now jobs whereas other parts of canada have scarcity of jobs we do have scarcity of labor we have shortage of labor and part time jobbers we have good jobs because of all the industries flourishing uh, into the city <clears throat> i'm sorry most of the students are working in service industry retail industry we have mcdonald's tim horton pizza hut starbucks you name it and we have it big departmental stores walmarts and everything is there so many jobs are there students are doing now a uh, minimum wage is 16.75 which is 17 dollar almost so students even in entry level jobs students are able to get more than this as, as well 18 19 up to 20 dollars they are getting this is an in student verified information i'm not a uh, you know telling you this on the basis of a google search or a random uh, word that i heard from somewhere i talk to my students who are already living there and i get to know that yes there are jobs there are good jobs when any students are recommending now their friends and their relatives to come down to cranbrook because they have their jobs and accommodation sorted also pr is very quick so apart from good weather cost of living accommodation and jobs you have pr within 3 and a half years pnp provincial nominee program is followed here i have diploma programs mostly so any student who is going for diploma program or a two year diploma they would get a three year work permit once they get a once they get a permit they are eligible to apply for uh, to work and as soon as they have completed one year of work experience they are eligible to apply under bc pnp now within next 6 year months or a year maximum they would be able to get their invitation based on the points they have re received there based on the um their work what they are doing the job and what diploma or bachelor's they have done so pnp is the game of points you know you and me know about it many of the students also know about this now okay i would like to show you the campus so this is the campus you see it's a huge campus for 360 degree development of students it is very close to the city not far away within 1 and 1/2 or 2 km maximum walking distance 
uh, students will find accommodations very easily and jobs also. <laughs> So you see so many grounds. We do have soccer ground, uh, lawn tennis. Inside of the campus, we have gym and club and everything for the students to opt for. College is also making, uh, organizing adventure activities in the Rocky Mountains for students every once in a while. Plus, college is very, very supportive for international students. Travel arrangements, home stays. Also, um, their air, free of cost airport pickup is there. So community that we have built there of international students, it is really uh, coming forward to help to the newcomers. Okay, now apart from this, I would like to talk about the requirements that college asks for. The requirements are very reasonable. Any student who has done 10th, 12th graduation or any learning program they have done, they must achieve 50% overall and no less than 50 in it. So this is the basic bare minimum criteria of getting admission in College of the Rockies. Now, if we talk about IELTS, IELTS would be for UG undergrad diplomas, six overall, no less than six. For PG, 6.5 overall, no less than six again. Then if you talk about PTE, we are getting good visas in PTE. College of the Rockies has very good visa success rate all in all and we are getting because you know and government is encouraging students to go into this province and visa success rate of PTE IELTS both are really high for College of the Rockies. Now if I talk about PTE for UG undergrad diplomas it 56 overall no less than 50. For PG it is 60 overall no less than 50 again. When I say these, these are the requirements you will also not only get the offer but you will also get the visa in this. I mean, you are more uh, mostly, you are more likely to get the visa with these requirements in Cranbrook. Okay, Um. now if we talk about TOEFL, yes, we do accept TOEFL. It is 80 overall for both PG and UG. And uh, individual score goes like reading 13, listening 12, um, speaking 18 and reading 20, uh, writing 21. So that would be the individual score for TOEFL. And then comes gap, we would take two to three years of gap after 12th, five to say five to eight years of gap after graduation. So any student who has gap justification, but has more than this much of gap, let's say any student after graduation, they have 10 years of gap, you can send the profile to us for pre-assessment. We will check if the profile is eligible, we will give you a green signal. And that would mean that you'll get the offer letter from college's side. We will, uh, that's the com whole purpose of pre-assessment then only you will have to pay $100. So it makes sense for you and the student as well. Then comes um, backlogs. We would be able to take two backlogs each year, which means if it is a three-year program, then six backlogs are allowed. If it is a four-year program, then eight backlogs are allowed. Then comes conditional offer letter. We are currently not offering any conditional admission to students. So once the profile is completed, they have their proficiency test, they have their academic score in hand, then only we will pursue with College of the Rockies. Okay, and now comes open boards. Also, we are not right now, we are not taking open boards. But if you think the profile all in all is very good and there is one open board, there is only one open board that um, uh, we can still consider, you think we can still consider the student because the profile is good, then great. Uh, send it send it for pre-assessment and we will tell you if the profile is eligible. Now, I think I'm not forgetting anything in requirements. Yes, the application fees, it is $100. But as I told you, we do pre-assessment for almost all the profiles. And once we tell you that, yes, uh, you your profile is eligible for the college, this means you are most likely to get the offer letter and you are not paying $100 for nothing. You will get your offer letter once you pay your fees. Turnaround time, although is three to four weeks, we take good time with the application. So you can expect your offer letter within 21 working days, which would take almost around four weeks. Now, currently we are open for January and May intake. January intake is going to be closed on 29th of September, which is end of this month. month and uh, May, we are still taking applications for May. Great. Now comes the, um, I think uh, we have covered anything that you need to ask for requirements, Chitendra, anything that comes in your mind? Uh, 
I'll cover all the questions together once you are done. So great, great, great. Okay, at the end of the session, we will do a Q and A. No problem. Okay, great. So apart from this, um, now if I talk about programs, uh, I would like to stop sharing my screen because I would mention programs, and then later I would just share the program metrics with you because it, not all the student would understand the program metrics if I share it on the screen right now. That would not make sense. All right, so in programs, there is a catch now, a lot of good things, but uh, when it comes to College of the Rockies, we need mathematics for almost all of our programs. Now, what are the programs where we do not need it? So 2024, is coming with three new intakes for College of the Rockies, January, May, and September, which is winter, spring, and fall. Now, including these three, I mean, all three intakes have four programs where you do not need to uh, have mathematics in the profile, which would be tourism management, hospitality management, early childhood education, and criminal and social justice. Very good programs, potential, a lot of potential is there in the programs. Plus, uh, gen not all the programs are open in January and May because being the smaller intakes in comparison to September, all the programs although would be open in September. So January would give you, I'll give you an option of tourism management in January. We can enroll students for tourism management, art student, commerce student who do not have mathematics in the background in their academics. They can go for tourism management. Uh, we are working on the alternatives for mathematics and it is still in process. So it can take uh, a few intakes which are coming. And as soon as we have finalized on the option for our alternative for mathematics, I will definitely update you about it. Any student who has mathematics, they can go for multiple programs in January. They can go for business programs like business management certificate, business management diploma, general marketing, accounting, Plus, there is a bachelor, bachelor's in business administration with specialization in sustainability. And that makes it a different program. So any student who wants to go for that, they have to have the mathematics in background. Then comes uh, my PG program, which is a STAR program. It's, it is PDD, Post Degree Diploma in Sustainable Business Practice. Now, uh, what makes this program so special? This program is... Uh, designed for those students who comes from a non-business degree, a non-business background, those engineers, BSc student, MSc, BCA, MCA students, those students, if they change, they want to change their uh, specialty, they want to move into the business program, they want to learn something about business practices, this is the program for them. Also, these students would always have mathematics in the background, BSc, MSc, non-medical, a BC, MCA, engineering student, they would always have mathematics, PCM students, these are. So maths requirement is fulfilled and program description itself uh, elaborates that this is a program who for students who have not studied business in earlier academics. So this is a very good program. Uh, most, more than 80% profiles that I'm ge getting for this program and we are getting really easy visas for engineering and MC, MSc, BSc students, especially if they have done agriculture, MSc and BSc students, if they have done this in agriculture. Great. So for January, we also do have associate programs open like associate of arts, any student with arts coming with ma additional mathematics, they can go for associate of arts. Then comes uh, three programs for super medical students. Super medical students would be physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology. I do have uh, associate of science, environmental science and biology and medicine pre-major for those students. Now, uh, there is one more program, social work pre-major. Any student coming from any background, securing a visa is really easy for a social work pre-major program. So any student from arts background, commerce background, or even uh, PCM background, I have seen visas coming for them. I have seen students applying for this program, but mathematics is a requirement. So January, if you do not have mathematics, tourism is your option. May, if you do not have mathematics, hospitality management is your option. Now, more about hospitality management. Hospitality management is not in Cranbrook campus. It is in Invermere campus, which is close to Cranbrook, only 137 kilometers away. It's a drive of uh, one hour and 25 minutes. 
uh, it is a paid co-op program. So co college has the complete setup. You work with college, you get the experience. You also earn on the minimum wage with the college. Plus, uh, after a diploma, when you start working, this will be counted. This experience, hands-on learning will be counted and you will be uh, more, um, ex you would be expert of what you're doing, basically. You have because already worked with college and you are earning at the same time. So average fees for college would be somewhere around 50,554, which is 9.5 lakhs in INR. Now, a few programs are there here, uh, like uh, tourism or hospitality, where fees is higher. So for, for tourism management, it is 17,100 for first year. Second year remains the same, 15,554. For hospitality management, it is uh, somewhere around... 19,100 for first year, but second year is only 14,000. So it will be balanced out and it plus it is a co-op program. So students are anyways going for it. They really want to earn while they're studying. All right. Okay. Uh, so these are the program. Also, the business programs would be open in May, not the associate program. So everything that I told you about for January, associate programs, business, bachelor's, PG program and tourism management. Now, May, we only do, we only have hospitality management and business programs, UG, PG, both. We would not be having associate programs open in May. So that's the difference. May is even smaller intake. And then in September, everything will be open. The student can opt for uh, any option that is that they are eligible for. So that would be all from my side. And if you have any questions. Okay, thank you so much uh, for this session and for explaining everything. Uh, first, uh, which one is the most popular program if we want to go for Jan in general intake? So right now we are focusing for Jan. Later on, we, we are going to move for, for May intake. So which yes. one is the most popular program for January? So I'll give you two programs. First is tourism management. Obviously, it is a very easy program, basic assignments. And uh, without any student who do not, we do not require any specific subject for it, like English or mathematics. So many students are going for it. Second would be my PG program because a lot of students are coming after graduation. They want to go for a PG program and they have experience in hand and we are getting good visas and sustainable business practice. So that would be the second popular program. Now, uh, so if we take for January, so uh, tourism on UG, in UG, it is open. Any other program open for in UG for January? Uh, yes, math with mathematics, business programs are open and associate programs are open. Uh, okay, all these are open. Business and, and associate. associate program. How to recognize associate programs? So associate of arts, that is one. Associate yes. of science. Yes. Then we do have associate of science in environmental science. Okay, general degree and uh, environmental science. Yes, yes. Okay, and then biology program. and medicine pre major. That is again an associate program. Okay, and uh, this is for medical students. This is for super medical students: physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, so this is open. Uh, what about engineering certificate? These fine arts these are not open i will share the program matrix it i have everything mentioned there that if it is open for not engineering certificate and everything else that you see on the matrix it will be open in september now again okay got it okay business management pg diploma is open you said so this is the only pg program you are having sorry sorry I'll come again please it was breaking uh, uh you have pg diploma in business management it is open for uh uh, January intake, post degree diploma. This is the PG program, correct? This is the only PG program you are having or any other PG program as well? No, no, no. I do have one PG program only. It is versatile, although anybody can go for it, but yes, just one. Okay, understood. Okay, so associate programs, I could write First, biology, medicine, pre-major. Yes, biology and medicine pre-major. Okay, got it. Okay, so okay, uh, going towards the requirement uh, for UG programs, how much of study gap is accepted after 12? Is there any foundation on that? Yeah, uh, so we are taking two to three years 
although even if the student has passed in 2019 which would now be almost four years for january we would still take the profile okay do you require any gap justification experience oh, after 12, no after 12 no gap justification required uh alexander you can ask your question in chat uh, i'll take the question uh, with arjita and uh, she's going to explain just just ask your question in uh, chat okay uh 12th requirement is uh, somewhere it is written 60% in some programs it is 65% so is there any particular criteria for that yeah so uh, i'll tell you what if you're talking about tourism management or business programs basically diploma programs and the pg program also including bachelors of business if we talk about you will get the admission on the basic criteria that i told you 50% overall no less than 50 right 50 but for us yes yes 50% overall, no less than 50. But if you talk about uh, associate programs, then the criteria is a little uh, rigid there. So we, if we are talking about 60% overall, then it is 60. And if we are talking about 65 overall, then it is 65 only. So there we are very specific about the requirements, but business, tourism, and other diploma programs, including PG, we would be able to take uh, profiles on 50 overall, no less than 50. And you, if the, the student is eligible, we will give you the offer letter. Got it. And then uh, student needs to pay for the offer letter fee after getting kind of soft approval and then they need to pay the application fee. Absolutely. You are going to do it. Me and my team. I have an admission team that's doing it, that's sitting behind the desk, not traveling like me, sitting in the car taking sessions. They're sitting behind the desk and doing this, handling pre assessments and admission formalities and everything. Uh, can we decrease the turnaround time because if it is going to take one month to get the offer letter, then student needs to pay fee and that GIC, then it is it becomes a long, long it process. Is, yeah, so I'll tell you, generally it takes this much. Like if we talk about May intake, if you apply for that, it is not going to be reduced than four weeks. But if you talk about January, because this is the end of the, uh, the end of the intake would be this 29th of September. Now we can still try and get you the offer letter in less than two weeks two weeks so that you have sufficient time to pay um for tuition deposit so uh, can we consider that we can get offer letter within two weeks now for january yes yes I, we can try for it we, i would not 100 percent comment but i will put it on priority and i can definitely try for it we there are chance higher chances okay if we require uh to share mathematics score in 12th or if someone doesn't have it in 12th, can it be in 10th as well? Or just 12th score is mandatory for no, easy 12th is mandatory. Where we we are asking for um, mathematics, we mean 12th. We are considering that the student has by default studied mathematics in 10th. So where, if we require it, we will consider 10th maths definitely. But when wherever we are requiring it, it is 12th grade. Okay, 12th, how much, how much is the percentage requirement in math? 50, per, 50 marks. If you have 50%, that's good for us. Good enough. Okay, same for UG and PG level. 50% in math. Yes, yes, if some absolutely. student is there who has studied uh, Bachelor of Arts, wants to go for PG post degree uh, diploma, PG diploma. So, uh, it's still math requirement because uh, then a BA student without math cannot get admission in this business diploma, PG diploma. Yes, no, no, not at all. If they either they have to have the mathematics in 12th grade, if by chance they did not, but they studied mathematics in graduation, it has to be part of complete curriculum. It cannot be part of just one semester or two semester. It has to be part of complete curriculum. I'll give you an example. I very recently in September, one of my students went for this. They did BA. In 12th, they did not have, the student did not have mathematics. BA, they did specialization in mathematics for some reason. And then we were able to fetch the offer letter for PG diploma for them. So complete curriculum means if student has studied uh, one semester mathematics, still it will not work. No, 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 not considered. So BA students may not be able to get admission. So for PG, yes, yes, yes. That's my bad, but yes. <laughs> okay. But usually on PG level, they don't have, if student has experience, still it is not uh, uh, waved off. If student has experience, five years, seven years of experience. Yeah, so we are working on it, Jitendra, as I told you, we're working on alternatives for mathematics. 
but honestly uh, everything that uh, comes under the option list is uh, into consideration we have not reached the decision yet the management is yet to make the decision so let's see what comes for us for january and may or probably the complete uh, all the intakes in 2024 we might still be with the same requirements okay um, you have just one bachelor degree it is four year of bba correct yes yes okay uh, fees 17528 which which is mentioned here the requirement for admission is same or is there any uh, different requirement than diploma in that for pg diploma no for bachelor degree no no requirement remains the same 50% overall no less than 50 good to go for bba uh, what is this pre kelsey 12 greater than uh, greater than 60% what is what is that pre kel this means mathematics that's why i told you no when student asks that I or uh, like you have a profile and counselor will ask you that the, my student has stats or they have economics or business mathematics, I would not be able to consider that. But because we are asking for those students who have studied calculus, hmm. which is a part of mathematics, not business mathematics, no stats, economics or anything. So hmm. cal this is calc uh, for associate programs. I need calculus for 11th and 12th, both grade. For business programs, they have to study mathematics either in 11th grade or 12th. Unfortunately, we do not have any board in 11th. So we only do have board in 12th. There are home examination in 11th. So we need to have 12th grade mathematics. Understood. Got it. Okay. So this is related to programs. How much is study gap accepted for PG level program? See, we do accept five to eight years, but we uh, have taken profiles for 10 years up to 12 years as well. If you have gap justification, we will require, require gap justification for that. If you think the student has relevant gap justification, they have worked or experience they can show, then definitely you can send us the profile. Now, uh, means if the justification is there, experience is there in that case, uh, okay. gap won't matter. We can get admission with uh, at any age. Is it right? Okay, uh, there is one question. Uh, what is the business? What are the business programs offering? Are you offering any business master's program? Uh, so I guess the PG uh, program is there. PG diploma is yes. there. The master's. So, master's, yeah. If you're talking about MBA, that would be more likely available in universities, not in colleges. It is a college. So, but yes, uh, Farkan, if I'm, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, if you're looking for a PG program in business, I do have a post degree diploma in sustainable business practice that we have been talking about. And you need mathematics in 12th for that. Also, depending on your nationality. So we do have different requirements. Like if someone is coming from Africa or Nigeria, these are English speaking countries. So we do not need IELTS for them. And they have different education systems. So the requirements are different. Okay. So... Uh, how many students are there in the college in, in this particular campus and in other yes. campuses? So complete uh, strength of Cranbrook campus where most of the students would be going because only two programs are running in different campuses. So uh, the strength is 2,500, 2,400, almost more than 2,400 students out of which 15% would be international students. So you get to interact with local population a lot still there in my uh, area, in my province and the city. You get to experience the uh, culture of local people can with Canadian roots and you get to meet the, them, understand their culture, understand their language and overcome these language barriers and, you know, and explore more. So, yes, 15% would be the international student out of 2400 of strength. Okay. Uh... If someone is from Pakistan, in that case, is there any difference in requirement or is it going to stay same? No, for Pakistan, it is going to be the same. Yeah, because we are more likely uh, have the same education, I believe. But still, I would be double sure on this and I'll tell you, send you, if you want to go forward with this, I will send you the requirements in specific format. Uh, in Pakistan, there is one thing. I, I don't know uh, whether uh, uh, Furkan had this kind of education or not, but generally, they have two year of bachelor degree, which is called bachelor, and they two year of master's degree, and then Canada consider this entire education as bachelor. 
so uh, how it is going to happen are you going to consider their bachelor as bachelors uh, which is two year bachelor or when they are going to complete their masters then only you are going to uh, consider it as year bachelor so i i told you i would have to be double check the requirements of pakistan now and uh, i will look into it i'm not sure if you are saying that canada accepts four year of program which is bachelor plus master is in pakistan if this is a practice done by many universities and college i'm sure we would be accepting it the same way but still i would be double sure about it jitendra and i will update you on this uh for can please share your uh, profile and details with me on whatsapp and Next email day. id is with you maybe so i once i share the details with you you can be more clear on this yeah so i'll uh, put it i'll you know what i think i think we would be able to offer pg program if they have the all the requirements are uh, you know being met because two year bachelor degree might not work for a masters program but it can still work for a pg program so if you are genuinely interested yes he, he has dropped the details maybe you can contact him and then i'll be connecting with you for the same sure so generally it happens that for pg diploma many colleges and universities they have the criteria that after 12th you require to have either two year of two year of diploma or two year of degree and it also meets the requirement for a pg diploma so there are many universities and colleges which are uh, giving admissions in pg diploma based on a ug diploma as well so this bachelor degree can also be considered if your uh, college is uh, also having the same kind of criteria so you can yes, that's what that's what i would be double sure about and then i'll update you on the same okay good uh, location benefits uh, and accommodation so you have already shared about the accommodation and uh, location benefits so is there any specific pr benefit of uh, living in that particular uh, place yes because it comes not complete british columbia comes under pnp or uh, they have regional special, advantages special, yeah regional benefits yes there. yes you live in vancouver or surrey you would still struggle for 5 years for your pr maybe you go to toronto students are still struggling it's been 7 years they're str struggling for pr you get your pr within 3 to 4 years in this province so that's a good part for students now you have a better pay you know the city better and you can get a better job you can also move anywhere you want correct uh job nearby you have explained uh, th there are good number of jobs available uh, usually this is uh, this may be the perception people may be having whoever is watching now or later on so uh, if people see that the location is a smaller location or it is a village or small town in that case there may be issue of uh, jobs but usually it happens that in bigger cities there are more issues of job rather than smaller cities or yes, smaller right places now. so i have already experienced it i am living in a place where uh, less number of students are there number of job opportunities are lot more than the city so i am living near victoria in victoria number of opportunities may be less we are getting more opportunities very nearby and same is the sydney city there also uh, no students are going no students are leaving so there uh, we are we are finding more job opportunities so in, in uh bigger cities the concentration of students and colleges are lot more than smaller cities smaller places and you can get more opportunities and you get more exposure as well so yes. nearby me everyone is canadian <laughs> so you uh -huh. know, we are the only indian family living here and okay. no one else is there uh, from outside so exposure wise as well you can say or you can consider that you are going to uh, meet more international people uh rather than people of your nationality some people have this concern some people want to live with the, uh, their own nationality only but you mixed, can choose mixed students come you know some would want to live with the community some would want the local population more that we want to live somewhere where we would find the local people canadian people you know more than indians or the other nationalities so this is a concern depending on the student to student mm. uh is there any job support system after completing the study to get full time yes. jobs yes 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 see college also gives you part time options at the campus but students are getting many jobs out of the campus so most of the students are working off campus only like uh, on campus jobs would be like lab assistants library assistants or you know assignments occasionally coming with the teachers and faculty those uh, um your instructors so they would uh, take your help and pay you accordingly uh or uh, if the part for a part time job 
but most of the students are working outside because a lot of job opportunities are available when i talk to my students they say ma'am we do have good jobs here new students are getting jobs in within one week so that that's a good news for me i think okay so, uh, so support will be there from uh, uh, from departments faculty and uh, Yes, uh, and, yes, yes, absolutely. Post job, we do have a department, dedicated department, who have a local employers network. And College of the Rockies highly encourages students to enter into corporate white collar jobs after their diploma and bachelor's or PG program, rather than entering into a labor job. So this is one support we really like to provide to our students. We help them update their resume, prepare them for interview, connect them to the right company, right department. Not all the companies would come on campus, but my, that department you will have to go approach the department definitely. Once you go there, they will definitely help you with uh, the jobs and the companies and whatever network they have created. They are halfway there already, and they will definitely help students for po post diploma jobs. Great. Uh, in how many months students are going to complete their uh, uh, study? If it is a two year of program, then will it be completed in 16 months or 24 months or 20 months? Is the gap mandatory, uh, study gap mandatory in between the study or it is not mandatory how, how it is structured? Yeah, so we do give semester break definitely. So one semester is of four months, you see. Yeah. And you gonna, any student who is going for a diploma, they're going for fourth semester. So yeah. study is of in total 16 semester, 16 months only, yeah. but with the yeah. gap and everything between semester and semester break and everything, you would complete it in around 20 months. So after two semesters, there will be a, a study break. Uh, every semester, after every semester, you'll get a small break. See, first semester, then you get a small break of around 21. I 21 two days to one that, month. That is not month wise. It is not a break. So I am talking yeah. about four month break, complete semester break. So uh, will there be that a mandatory would be for after first year, after one year both of Okay. So is it mandatory to take that break, semester break, or a student can complete the entire study in sixteen months only? No, 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 no. If the college is not running any program, that it would not be. Uh, this option would not be available for student to opt for course and study because instructor would not be there and then you know they would run a program for the the course for the complete class your batchmates with the you so if and also it depends on program to program you might have that gap for your program and if you are enrolled for a different program which doesn't offer you a gap a big gap so that can be again a case okay okay well, but if if the but if you are studying you cannot individually complete a program. It would be run for the complete class. Okay. So uh, if, if the program is running, uh, in that case, uh, there is an option that student can complete it without taking a break in 16 months as well. Yes. Okay. Any criteria to get scholarship initially or later on? Yes. Not initially. If you are going off campus, you are paying a first year fees, which is very reasonable in my case. It is only nine and a half lakhs in Indian currency, plus 15,554 average. This is average for uh, Canadian uh, currency. But second year, later on, you get a chance to go for a scholarship, which is a fixed amount of dollar two thousand. Now, what is the criteria? So if you are getting 70 percent, so now D grade is passing there. D, uh, on if you are able to get a D grade, you are able to pass through the assignment through the semester. Now D grade is equivalent to fifty percent here in India. If we see, their fifty percent are passing score. Their uh, passing score is fifty percent. R is thirty three. So it is the equivalency. You see, many Indian students are getting this scholarship because it is offered on seventy percent only. A little higher than C grade, and you are able to get the scholarship of dollar two thousand straight away deducted from your second year's fees. So okay. yes, uh, you can apply for this. You for this you will need seventy percent grade in your assignments, a reference letter from your academic counselor, any one of your academic counselor. Plus, you need to be a little active in your volunteer activities, the campaign run by college. You know this makes you more likely to get scholarship. Got it. Great. So something students can save. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you have shared there are three intakes available, uh, January, May, and September. All the programs are not in May. 
most of the programs are there uh, most programs are there in september in generally okay, some programs are not, some programs are not there okay so uh, is deferment allowed uh, if student is not ready to apply for visas post gets the offer letter for january but uh, is not able to get either the visa or get refusal or not able to apply for january are you going to allow to defer uh, for this particular intake okay okay this is a really good question jitendra so any student who got the refusal applied for visa got the refusal hmm. they would be able to defer one time they would be able to defer we will give you immediately you apply we give you deferred loa for next intake hmm. if the uh, with the condition that program is running in the hmm. next intake hmm. if you got the offer letter you paid the fees you did not apply for visa hmm. you want to defer hmm. we do not offer deferment in that case you will have to reapply for new intake get the offer letter but the fees that you paid would be considered now let's take an example of may intake if you applied for may intake business program in september intake the fees will, would be revised hmm. you paid for may intake complete fees of the year let's say uh, it was uh, 6, 6 15500 now it has been renewed it has been revised to 16100 and then you have deferred it so you would have to pay the balance amount understood but the other the complete fees would definitely be considered manually also this varies from case to case so in past we have been able to get one deferment even without applying for visa so definitely we will send an request to international team that student has financial issues or family issues or whatever there are chances that we can apply for a free of cost deferment without applying for visa also but i cannot assure you that the legit way is reapplying for the program okay even without paying the fee is the deferment possible can we take the reapply reapply without... Re okay so without paying fee we cannot you, you are not going to uh, give any deferment No, you can put a request, and uh, we st college still might consider that is really case to case basis. If the student, get, I mean, if it is a very genuine case, and if you know you are able to make your uh, uh, story there, then we still the international team still might consider that you can have a deferment. But it has to be a genuine problem or something that student is going through. Not that they I uh, changed my mind or I would go to January, not September now or. to september not january this must not be the case got it so uh, do we allow conditional offer letter without ielts or pt no no conditional offer. i mentioned earlier also uh, when the profile is ready we, they have their proficiency test they have their academic score then only we will go for college of the rock if a student hasn't uh, given 12th examination based on uh, their pre board uh, and something of this sort Uh, do you give a predictive score you are talking about no nothing no condition no conditional offer letter okay uh, do you provide admission based on duolingo test uh we have recently stopped my bad last month only earlier we were taking taking duolingo last month we have taken this decision that we will not be taking duolingo anymore okay medium of instruction letter in bachelors is it allowed for admission or not no 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 no, no. moi basis no okay admission without mathematics we have discussed in detail uh, relaxation in percentage if someone has like 65% marks but individual uh, subject it is 48% or it's in ridiculous. mathematics it is 45% we can, we can still take it we can okay we can it will go into the pre assessment and we will see how many subjects have lesser marks than 50 and then we will give you a decision on this and decision is generally done in on the same day so you send us the profile you get your reward within like 2 or 3 hours at max you give us a call i i'm able to get you the on spot assessment as well okay and uh, in this particular kind of scenario we can be relaxed and sit and ask student to wait for the offer letter even if it is taking 20 days it's it's not a problem yeah that's what no if you're waiting for 3 to 4 weeks for college of the rockies you are sure that you're going to get the offer letter you do not you have nothing to worry about Okay, that's a good. So if you paid hundred dollars, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> really fine, no. Okay, uh, in which program co-op is available for January intake? January co-op, see co-op is available in most of my programs, but not paid. 
so paid co-op is only available if you can in find it somewhere May. else as well i guess if co-op is there uh, then they can go somewhere else uh, as well i did not get your question means it's not required to be in the uh, college only co-op they can complete somewhere uh, outside as well is it right if co-op is there in the program yes 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 definitely Okay. But for hospitality, not for hospitality. You have to stay with the college, hmm. and uh, college will pay you because for the co-op, it's a paid co-op. College is paying you in May intake. Understood. Okay. Gap we have discussed backlogs uh, per semester. Two backlogs are accepted. Per 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 year, two backlogs are accepted. Per year, why per year? Per year. So if there are two semester, then three each years. Semester one. Achha, each semester one. Okay. I'll take. I'll give you one uh, for buffer. So three year program, six to seven <laughs> backlogs. A four year program, eight to nine backlogs. I'll take it. Okay, got it. Uh, number of days of classes. How many days I uh, students need to take classes? Yes. So the classes are generally eighteen to twenty two hours. So it will be uh, on lecture basis. You have a lecture today. You have two lectures tomorrow. You'll get your academic calendar well within advance. It is generally three to four weeks. Okay. Three to four days in a week. I'm so sorry. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Peer, we have discussed uh, application fee. So uh, it is hundred. There is hundred percent application fee. Where do you have any application fee waiver as well in any um, semester any time? It comes in, uh, you know, depending on the program and semester. So not right now. We are not running any waiver. But if it would be coming, I will definitely update you about it. It comes for a specific program in a specific September, a specific intake. Not always running. So it, it I will oh. update you about it. Okay. Uh, is there any turnaround time? Uh, you have discussed it. It's fourteen days, I guess, uh, for pre of letter. Are you going to give two offer letters separately? First pre-offer letter, then we will pay the fee, then there will be final offer letter, or whatever offer letter you are giving is final offer letter without condition. No, no, no. I have whatever offer letter I'm giving, it is not even a PDF. It is a mail, part of the mail. Student will get a mail from international team directly. Mention okay. that uh, you have been offered an admission. You can accept the offer paying this much of fees for this semester or this much of fees for this semester. Then student yes. will get the offer letter. Yes, student. No, no, this is offer only. This is offer only. Do you will get LOA after you pay the fees? That would be letter of acceptance. We do not see College of the Rockies is not giving you a PDF as offer letter. We are that, sending you a mail. That is initial offer letter. So I uh, so there are two parts now. One part is getting the approval of uh, yeah, admission. That's same day. That I will email. do that in same day. Free of cost, same day. But you will not get and you'll only get a mail that yes, this file is eligible. The student is eligible for the program. Got it. Same day. Then you punch in the application. We have not punched in the application yet. You punch right. in the application in the college. You pay the fees on EPBC portal. Okay. And then once the student has paid, that starts from there. Your okay. 21 working days, which is three to four weeks working days. This starts so from after, there. After 21 days, a uh, student will get a letter of acceptance correct no they will get in get a mail another email Thanks. another email yes as a part of mail they will get an offer from college no pdf attached no file attached at a pass as a part of mail everything will be mentioned on it that you have applied for this program and we have offered you uh, admission for this program you can accept the offer by paying this much fees for this intake or this much fees for this intake once the student, there would be a link of pay my tuition. If once the student start making the payment, let's say they have clicked on the link, made the first semester's payment, within hmm. one week, you will receive the LOA, letter of acceptance, on basis of which you go for filing. So uh, I am considering that acceptance email as the pre-offer letter in email only. And after yeah. paying fee, the final letter of acceptance will come in seven days. Yes. Okay. So uh, how much how much is the fee we need to pay to accept the offer? One semester. One semester fee. So around seven, eight thousand dollars at least. Eight thousand around eight thousand, yes. Eight thousand dollars. Okay. In after seven days, we are going to to get the letter of acceptance. Uh 
do you issue any separate uh, re receipt for uh, uh, whatever fee we are paying or it is like uh, generated it will be received the from payment tuitions only directly it will be received from there and you also send me the mail with the receipt and we need to pay one year fee to apply under sds category yes so we can pay it okay so in two parts we can pay it it's not a concern not a concern at all after getting the final letter of acceptance, then we can pay, uh, we can proceed for visa application. Okay, yes. got it. all the documents are done from uh, university side. Okay, fine. So it is usually going to take 28 business days in the entire process to get the final LOA. Yes. If there is no delay in between uh, in paying fee or something of this sort. Yes, then. Got it. So now at the end of it is end of January intake. So you it would be quicker definitely. We would uh, do the quick offers and quick LOAs. So you can expect that. But it is when it is beginning of intake, this is how much it is going to take. Okay, is it possible to take any math foundation program completed to get admission? No, 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 not right now. I told you we are considering many options. One is this out of which equipoise test, uh, maths foundation test, a mandatory program that student will uh, study in first semester and everything. So we are considering things. Everything is under process. We have not yet uh, officially um, announced anything on that on mathematics requirement. Mm, got it. Is there any interview, et cetera, for getting admission or just? No, no. pre-assessment pre only. Got it, job prospect, okay. If someone has done a diploma after 10th, then in that case, uh, what kind of admission is possible? No, no, we need 12th. Uh, but diploma after 10th is equivalent to 10th, equal, equivalent to 12th in India. Yes but not in College of the Rockies. So we will need 12. Okay. Uh, do you allow admission in PG diploma after master's degree as well? If someone has done MTech or yes. any, any master's degree? MBA, MTech, yes, you can take PG After degree. MBA, definitely I will suggest people not to take admission in a business development program, business management program. MBA already covers uh, most of it, uh, its port portion. So it is, a, okay. it is quite risky. So don't I'll go. tell you why. Uh, I'll tell you why I suggest sometimes. Uh, some students who have done MBA from India, they are still looking for specializations. So this is a specialization in sustainable business practice, you know. That's why you can, if, if you think a student can make it and you would be able to secure the visa there, then you can suggest otherwise, this makes more sense with what you are saying that anyone who has done a master's already in business, why would they go for a PG diploma program? Yeah, usually so, visa officers don't go deep into these things to understand that this particular course content is not covered in the MBA. They don't have time to actually match and compare uh, the previous degree and the next degree. So that's why it becomes a risky option because visa officer usually see the highest qualification is MBA now going for a business management program. No, 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 you have already studied it and <laughs> discard the application. So you they don't have that. time actually for the system sometimes suggest it, suggest it like that because AI based system are there and they may not be able to uh, compare it. So that's why it becomes a risky proposition. Uh, that's why it is not suggested. Okay. Uh, if someone has done diploma after 12th, in that case, PG diploma, so this is still pending. Uh, you are going to share with me whether it, it is going to be allowed or not. Same is the case of Pakistan as well. Two year of bachelor degree uh, will be allowed for PG diploma. So this yes. is these are two things you need to uh, answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, if someone has done double bachelors, uh, which degree you are going to consider? latest one or anyone where the student is meeting the criteria for example ba uh, percentage is 45 percent llb percentage is uh, 55 percent llb is making the student eligible but uh, it is means which degree do you consider latest one anyone that's not on me if see i'll, I'll tell you what if you think uh, the gap justification, the gap that I'm asking for is covered. 
and the student is eligible on basis of BA as well. If you give me the 10th, 12th transcript and BA score, ka, score sheets, I will give you offer letter on the basis of the eligibility. If you do not give me BA, you give me LLB. I will check the profile on the basis of LLB. So that is totally up to you and the student. If you want to show both the, batch, both the bachelor undergrad programs or one of them or none at all. It is so on you. Sometimes students are like, we need to submit everything, the profile as it is to the college uh, rather than uh, uh, hiding something or this kind of thing. So it happens. So in that scenario, when we submit everything to the college, sometimes college have some kind of criteria which makes student ineligible to get admission, even though student could be eligible. Uh, I have given you example. So two bachelors, maybe one BA and second is BCom. BCom is the latest degree. Sometimes college say that we are going to consider latest degree. Okay, consider latest degree. Sometimes college say that we are going to consider first degree only and latest degree is not considered. So there are different type of situations where we have faced issues with the colleges where they try to say no, giving random reasons. So that's what I am trying to understand. Are you going to consider uh, the best available with us? This is the, yes. So this is the whole purpose of pre-assessment. Once you send us pre-assessment, you send us everything. Okay. okay? Let's say student has two de degrees or two diplomas or whatsoever. You've sent us both of them and then my team will make sure that if you are not eligible according to your BA, but you are eligible to according to your LLB, they will give, give you a call. Okay. My admission team will give you a call. They will say that according to your BA score, your eligibility is not meeting the requirements. But your, uh, your scores are not meeting the requirements. But for LLB, it is. So would you like to go proceed on the basis of LLB? and not show BA at all. If, if you are if you are going to give, we are we have no problem. That's what yeah. I am just trying to confirm that we're gonna call we and be comfortable call. with that. So it would be case to case. It is going to be case to case. We will give you a call that you are eligible on the basis of LLB but not on BA. So we will tell you that. And if you say that give me the offer letter on basis of LLB, we will not consider BA at all. Got it. Uh, we have BA degree, Bachelor of Education degree. Uh, with 55% marks. Same is the case earlier as well. But in India, BA is usually one year or two year. Uh, can student apply for admission in a PG diploma based on BA as well? Generally, when I come across a profile that uh, if they have done a BA, generally in most of, the, in 95% of the cases I've seen, they have done either BA or BCom or something before BA. Usually it happens, but sometimes yes. Uh, the concern is again, BA is meeting the criteria of percentage, but BA is not meeting the criteria. So, so BA is a two-year program. It is a two-year program, but in most cases, VES gives it uh, uh, the eligibility, uh, the equivalency of three years as well. So we have those kind of uh, VES evaluations as well. I will consider it. I will definitely consider it. And uh, uh, PG diploma requires maths. So again, they, you have to have maths either in BA or I mean if. Yeah, I don't think they have specializations in BA. So maybe in 12th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is done. Uh, do you require ECA or WES in any circumstances? That is educational evaluation through Canada? No, no. Okay. If student has started his study uh, in some particular uh, program, maybe bachelor's degree, are you going to consider credit transfer later on if they want to? Yes, transfer? yes, yes. So let's say um, they have done a diploma with me okay with college of the rockies they have six plus options to convert it into a degree capilano university unbc yokan gun kpu so many options are there so student can go to the website they can check the university transfer block transfer agreements and everything and we do have a transfer agreement a transfer criteria 
uh, if student has started BBA in India, completed one year, and uh, now going no. for a BBA in Canada, this no. credit transfer will be allowed? No? No. Okay, got it. Okay, so I'm done with questions. So many questions were there. <laughs> No problem. I'm always uh, in for the question and answer because, you know, that makes you understand the college and requirements more. So that's really a good part for me. Okay. Uh, what is the refund policy? If student get refusal, then uh, uh, how much is... Only $250 would be deducted and then rest of the amount will be released to student. They have to apply. They must apply within 30 days of refusal. Okay. And if it is they did not apply, then one semester's fees will be gone and they will only get second second semester's fees. But oh. if you have applied well within the due time, then only $250 operational fees would be deducted. Everything else will, will be refunded to student. Suppose student defer the admission first and then apply for refund. So uh, is it allowed? Are you going to refund or are you going to ask for another refusal letter in that scenario? Yes, yes. So there has to be a, a refusal letter because see, if you are saying they deferred and then now they want to apply this, uh, this we have had a recent case like this. They applied for re de deferment. We got the LOA and then they decided to refund because they wanted to shift to the destination. They wanted to go to UK now instead of Canada. So yes, in that case, now you have already crossed the tet of 30 days. Now you will only get refund uh, once you apply again for the visa, if you get the refusal, then you will apply. You can apply for refund. If you get, um, if you you know, um, still want to take it without applying for the visa, then once tempted fees will be completely gone. You will only get around seven to eight thousand rupees back, which is half one semester's fees. Okay, uh, if someone gets visa and decide not to go to Canada. There are circumstances like that as well. In that case, what is the refund policy? It is case to case. You will have to apply. And again, uh, looking at the reason and course, the college decides that what all amount would be. Although in general cases, we do uh, we not up, only up to $500 would be deducted out of, two, I mean, 250 to 500 can be deducted. Rest will be uh, refunded if the student did not enroll at all. If they enrolled for the programs, and then they are asking for refund. Then again, first semester fees would be gone, and then they will only get second year's fees. If they reach Canada and then they ask for refund without taking classes, in that case, what is the refund policy? They are changing uh, after reaching Canada. Yeah, so that that is something I do not encourage at all. Student <laughs> doing that. But students, <laughs> yeah, students are students. <laughs> yes, you bet they are. So it would vary from case to case. Okay. Is, is, is there any clear policy on that? That whether you are going to refund, whether you are not going to refund? It uh, solely depends on the reason of deferment, of, of this so, refund. So, uh, mostly they usually say uh, that we don't like the place, we don't like the college, something of this sort. Uh, they are allowed to change their college or university after getting their visa, after reaching Canada. So, they are allowed to do all those things and they are exercising their right, actually. Uh, so Around 250 to $500 can be deducted okay okay understood okay uh, so i am done with my questions uh, if there is any other question let me check uh, job market or opportunity there so that is already explained what uh, if the visa want to defer next intake if possible yes after getting your visa you can defer. after getting visa student can defer correct so that is possible it will be allowed uh, yeah we have answered those questions as well yeah, Great. so it was a nice session. Jitendra, thank you so much for having me on such short notice. Great. Thank you so much for uh, giving this session. And uh, means it, it went really fine, even though uh, <laughs> you are not in office still. Thank you. Thank you so I'm, much. I, I'm always on the road. This is, this, <laughs> see, I take care of complete India. So you see west, east, south. I, I keep moving, although I'm based in Chandigarh. But I keep moving from places to places. I'm on the highways or taking flights or shifting from one city to another, taking cabs. So this is how I live now. <laughs> it's a tough job, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying so good so far. So yes, that that this is working for me right now. Let's see what happens in the what future holds for me. But yes, I'm enjoying right now. Yeah, great, great, great. 
Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Arjita, for this session and answering all the questions. Uh, we look forward to uh, have more and more admissions. And uh, if students start liking the location, I like the locations. Uh, initially, or I had a perception about Canada that if it is a small place, then it it must be really Ujjada or something, something of that. <laughs> that's our Miran type. Uh, uh, but after uh, going to many places, I got to know that not even the bigger cities, even the small places are quite beautiful and uh, they are more livable compared to bigger cities. So. Uh, I recently visited Surrey uh, and okay. we didn't like it at all. I, I don't know whether the house students are, whether they are going to like my statement or not, but uh, compared to Victoria, it is nothing, absolutely nothing. So uh, even we could not tolerate small traffic jam as well. So here we don't have traffic jams, nothing. So, uh, we have, so uh, even even if you are going to a smaller place, it can give you great opportunities. You are uh, going to stay in a smaller place, but Especially it's going to have enough opportunities for you. Especially for students. Especially if the resources are still available, not exploited already by other people, and it is not densely populated where 100 people are standing already for 10 job opportunities. So it is not lack of job opportunities. It is basically more supply of part-time jobbers than labor. Absolutely. So that's what's happening. Absolutely. So. Here in Brentwood, I have already shared it. Shared it. Here in Brentwood, so uh, my cousin, he just reached here. He is going to start his study now. So in this small village, the population must be 500 approximately. And there are uh, there are already like, they have got three, four uh, approvals already for the job. So they have more jobs. Uh, uh, wherever they applied, they got the job. So, wow. And because people are looking for uh, part-time jobbers there, no? See, in Victoria, in Victoria City, situation may be completely different. And it is uh, overall in Victoria Island, uh, there are n number of jobs available. But this is a small town. Here only, they are getting wherever they are applying, they are getting jobs. Uh, they are getting that's, what, that's what happening in so also. It is the beauty of small places. There are more job opportunities, and the perception that bigger cities are going to have bigger opportunities. See, you are going to get similar kind of pay scales wherever you are going to go. So definitely, whatever the pay scale is there, you are going to get minimum wage plus one dollar or something. Maybe affordability, peace of mind, so uh, many things is. count. I mean, you will lead a better life in a smaller town. That that's right. for sure. During student time, small cities are really really good. You should visit and then decide and make some perception about the cities. Or find someone who is making videos of that place. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I would recommend that. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Arjita, for this sure. session. All right, Jitendra. So this is end of the session. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much.